Okay, here we go. Welcome to A Drink With James, episode 35, Coors Light Edition. Look, today's a tough day, okay? Uh, our, our new orange overlord was sworn in as president. And, you know, he won the election saying that he was a man of the people. And you guys may not know this, but I too am a man of the people. You know, I, I, sometimes I don't wear suits, I wear sweaters, like a normal person. I can drink beer. Um, and I think, you know, if, if being a populist worked for Donald Trump, maybe it will also work for me. Um, and we're gonna make, you know, we're gonna make social media great again. I'm even wearing this, I'm in the fucking same cat, or color as his hat. Um, so we'll see if it works. But, listen, on a more serious note, if you made it through the full hour of the last drink with James from last week, please send me an email. I don't know what I'll send you, but I'll send you a note or something. Anyone who can prove to me that they watched the entire hour, first of all, you should because it was fucking awesome. Um, drop me a line. I'll try and think of something nice to do for you. I'm agreeing to this because I'm already drunk. Let's do the show. You gotta, if you, let's say you have 100K on Instagram and, and 15K on, on YouTube. First of all, 15K on YouTube is, is fantastic. That's not, you know, that's nothing to like, you know, shake a stick at or something. I don't know, some folkism that I don't know. I'm, I'm, again, this is my populist thing. I'm trying to like come up with new phrases. But um, I think that video will be a more and more and more important part of social media and media in general. Look at, you know, Look at trends in just general media, Vox.com, um, you know, MIC.com, like these, Vice.com, these sites are investing most heavily in video. They're laying off huge portions of their editorial staff and hiring content studios to do video all the time. So I think if, if people whose entire job is pumping out, you know, dozens of pieces of content a day and their number one focus is video, if you're good at it and you can do it, it's something that you should definitely pursue. Um, yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's a huge pain in the ass and it's time consuming. Just ask Tim, he has to edit these videos. Uh, but in the long run, it is, I think it is super important. And because it's difficult, uh, less people do it, which means that you will be more likely to stand out. Um, it, it's like when I travel, right? I like to go somewhere that's really hard to go to, right? Like I just, I booked a, a trip for my mom's birthday down to San Miguel de Allende, and it, it is a huge pain in the ass to get to, right? It's, you know, I got a 7 a.m. flight that lands at 3 p.m., and then I got a two-hour cab ride to this little town. It takes the entire day to get there, but when I get there, it means that there's no assholes there. Because it's so hard to get to, there's no, like, you know, family who's, who's never traveled, and they just, like, flew down to Cancun for the weekend because they heard it was fun. Uh, it's 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 just like less crowded. Same goes for YouTube. It's really hard to do, and it's really, really hard to do well. So if you can do it well, it's just less crowded. Uh, there's less people who are doing it, so you're more likely to succeed. Yeah, I do think there's an in-between. First of all, let's focus on this. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Tim is, Tim's upset with me today. It's, it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock on a Friday night. There is an explanation. Um, yeah, here's the thing, like, it can be really expensive, but like, some of the best YouTubers I know have a tripod uh, and a little, like, Canon G7X that they flip the screen up on, and they click, you know, record, and they shoot the video of themselves, and then they edit, the, edit it themselves, and it takes them about a day. A day is a decent amount of time to edit a video, um, but they're not spending money. So I think if, you know, if, it is you talking to camera, um, then it actually should, you don't need a videographer to film you talking to camera. Um, so there are ways to do it cheaper. If you're shooting like, you know, travel, I, I think that like Jessica Stein uh, from Tula Vintage, if you go back, I'll have Tim try and find some of her videos. She used to shoot uh, little videos when she traveled. I'm not sure that she still does, but they were great little vignettes. They were just these short little moments and then she would splice it together and throw some music on it. She never had a videographer. They looked great. Um, I, I think that there are ways to do it 
inex you know, inexpensive, but you, you do probably have to learn how to, how to edit, um, which is, I think, fairly time consuming, but not rocket science, right, Tim? I think it's worth learning to edit your photos really well. I think it's, it's worth it learning to edit video. I think it's worth it learning to shoot video. I think it's worth it learning to work a camera. Like, this is your job. If you don't know how a camera works, then like, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you don't know how to edit video, then you don't know what to tell your video editor. If your video editor says, oh, this is gonna take two weeks to edit, and you're like, yeah, I think I can do that in like five hours, you can push back. But if you don't know how to edit, then you can't push back. So I think it, you should definitely try and do it on your own. You don't have to publish it. You know, you, you can just send it to your friends. You just play, just say, okay, I'm gonna take a weekend or a day. I'm gonna film my day. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into iMovie. iMovie makes it incredibly easy. Um, and I'm gonna splice a, a, a little video together and I'm gonna put some music on it and send it to your mom and see if she likes it. Just start there um, and, and see how it goes. You, you might find that it is, it is less uh, difficult than you thought, though it is fairly time consuming. First of all, there's this, there's this we kind of get questions like this from influencers all the time with everyone buying fake followers. Everyone's buying fake followers. Who is buying fake followers? Because everybody who's telling me everyone's buying fake followers, they're also an influencer. They're not, so like all the people who are accusing everyone else, they're not buying it. The people who are supposedly buying it are not saying they're buying it. So there, you know, I think there's this understandable, you know, string of jealousy through the industry. You know, it, it's not, you know, in my job, I don't look at other CEOs and I don't know how much money, you know, their companies are making and what their growth rates are and all of these things. I don't, I don't see that plastered on their LinkedIn profile. So it's harder for me to understand and like where I'm at as like a CEO in this world. You know, but as an influencer, it's really frustrating because there's that, that number defines you so much. Your following number defines you. And you might look at someone and be like, my content is better than theirs, but they're growing so much faster than me. I'm like, I just don't get it. And it doesn't seem fair. And I know I'm better than them. And I'm slogging away, but they're growing really fast. They must be buying followers. That's the only solution, you know? And I, be I believe we've touched on this before. Um, I, I know people buy followers, right? I know it's super easy to do it, but I think it is one, less pervasive than people think, two, a complete fucking waste of time for you to worry about it. You don't have to explain that you are not buying followers. You don't have to you know, wave the flag and say that every follower I have is real, I've never bought a follower, because nobody, if somebody buys followers, they're not waving a flag saying, hey, I bought this following. They're waving that flag just as much. I'm a cyclist, right? I liked Lance Armstrong. You know, he took drugs and won seven Tour de France's in a row. And he was, he, he was accused the entire time of taking drugs. And he was incredibly adamant. He was like, I am the most tested athlete in the history of sports and I am clean. I didn't take drugs. It comes out later he took an incredible amount of drugs. He just didn't get caught. Cheaters don't tell you they're cheating, so you running around waving the flag saying, I'm not cheating, is completely fucking pointless. And you're focusing on the wrong thing. You just need to do your thing. Sometimes people grow faster than you. And you know what? You're growing faster than somebody else. So just keep your eyes on the prize, which is your own shit, and don't worry about other people. I guarantee if people are buying followers legitimately, people know that. They will, they will find out. Brands will find out, and they will stop working with them and the people that are, have an authentic following will continue to get jobs. Um, so just focus on you and, and don't worry, you know, don't worry about everyone else. Tulum. I hate Tulum. Why does everyone go to Tulum? You know, we, we touched on this last week um, with Mr. Bridges um, and, and talking about going to unique places. Um, that is kind of a joke, but not really a joke. Everybody is going to Tulum, and I just, I just fundamentally don't understand it. Um, that said, outside of Tulum, what bothers me? <sighs> Room service photos. Super boring. Like, 
I think what bothers me about traveling is there's this like, there's this formula that people follow. It's like room service photo, and then it's like an exercise photo, and then it's a bathing suit, like, you know, pool, beach photo, and then it's a drink photo, and then it's like a fun photo out that night. And it's like the same thing every day with every single influencer. And you're going to the same places and you're taking the same photos. It's super boring, you know? I think when you travel, you have this amazing opportunity to show your following a place that they've never seen, right? And a place that potentially they want to go or they've dreamed of going. Uh, it, it's an escape from their day. I, tr I follow a lot of people who travel constantly and I'm saving their photos so when I can afford to go on a trip, I can remember that like the place they went looked really beautiful. But they're also pushing themselves to do things that are a little bit different. And I think that all of us could do that. Even if you are, God forbid, in Tulum, um, you can do things that are different. You don't have to just stay in the same resort that everyone else stays in and do the same things that everybody does. So I encourage you to, to get outside of your comfort zone, to try and do something a little bit different and to stop taking so many photos of your room service. That would be my suggestion. So look, Coors Light with James, episode one is done. That was fantastic. I don't know if we'll do it again. Um, I'm more of a whiskey man, but sometimes, you know, the silver bullet, it hits the, it hits the is this a silver bullet or is this tap the Rockies? Uh, Same thing, okay. So I'm glad we were able to tap the Rockies together and, uh, Keep sending the questions in, you know, ever since the new year, like Tim and I were just making the questions up for a while. <laughs> Tim's gonna be angry I said that, but, um, but the last like four or five episodes, it's been like all user questions, like really solid questions. So keep sending those in. Um, you can email me, you can tweet, you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on Instagram, you can, you can buy a billboard in New York, I don't care. Get the questions to us. We'll answer them. I'll switch back to whiskey and I'll be in a suit next week. Promise. Cheers.